Hey guys, in this video, we're going to learn how to make neural networks completely from scratch. And then we will put the networks into these creatures in an evolution simulator and see if they could learn how to evolve and survive over time with the brains that we give them in the form of neural networks. Let's start off by figuring out what a neural network is and how they actually work. The goal of a neural network is to take some inputs, do some calculations, and then give us some outputs. For example, if we were trying to make a network that could recognize whether or not an image is of a dog or a cat, then the input to the network would be the image and the output would be whether or not this is a dog or a cat. Neural networks are made up of a bunch of layers and nodes, and each layer has a group of nodes inside of it. The first layer is called the input layer, and it's, well, the inputs to the network that we just talked about. And the inputs are the information that we give the network that we think it needs to solve a problem. So in the example with the dog or a cat, it would be all of the pixel values for that image. And if we wanted to train the AI to drive a car, then it could be the inputs that it gets from the sensors on the car, which would be like the distances to the walls and things like that. Then we have the layers in the middle of the network, and these are called hidden layers. The hidden layers are where most of the calculations in the network happen. They're called hidden layers because the values in these layers don't leave the network. So if you were to think of the neural network as a black box that does calculations, you would give it the input layer and it would give you back the output layer, while the hidden layer stays hidden inside the box. And the final layer is called the output layer and the output layer is the final decision that the network makes based on the inputs we give it. The more hidden nodes and layers your network has, the better it will be at solving more complex problems. However, that also means that it will be much harder to train and it could take forever to find a solution. Each of the nodes in the current layer have a connection to all of the nodes in the previous layer. And this connection is called a weight. The value of a weight is basically how strong the connection is between the two nodes that it is touching. To simplify this, let's focus on a single node. Each of the nodes also have another value connected to it called the bias. Each node can have many weights connected to it, but they only have one bias. The node itself is a point where the weights, inputs, and bias get combined to calculate the value for the node. The actual equation to calculate the value for this node is the sum of the weights times the inputs plus the bias. And this equation might look a little complicated, but once you understand what it's doing, it's actually very simple and easy to understand. This first section here, the sum of the weights times the inputs, just means that the network takes the input and the weight that it's connected to and multiplies them together. And then it moves on to the next one and multiplies the input times the weight and then adds it to the previous one. So it adds up all of these connections. So it might seem complicated, but it's really just multiplying the pairs of numbers and adding them all together. Then, as you can see by the equation, the next thing we do is simply add the bias to this sum. And that's what I mean when I say that neural networks are actually rather simple. It's literally just multiplying pairs of numbers and then adding them together and then adding one more number at the end. After we calculate the value for the node, there's one small step before we could continue. And that's the activation function. The activation function basically decides whether or not we want to use the value we just calculated, or it could also modify it slightly. A very common activation function is called rectified linear, or ReLU for short. Although it sounds a little complicated, this function is actually very simple. It basically just means that if the value of the node is negative, we make it zero. And if the value is positive, we leave it alone. So in effect, this is basically turning off any nodes with a negative value. And this is just one of many activation functions, but it's also the most popular. So you might be wondering, how do you actually know what the weights and biases are for the network? And that's actually the entire goal of training a neural network. So when people say that they're trying to train a neural network, they actually mean that they're trying to find the correct combinations of weights and biases to solve the problem that they're trying to solve. There are many different ways to train a network, but they all have that similar goal of trying to find those weights and biases. And once you train a network, all that it is, is a list of weights and biases. So if you want to save the progress of your training, all you have to do is save that list of two numbers and put it in a file and you could put it on a different computer and run it and it will behave the same way that it did on your computer when you were training it. And that's how you can make different levels for an AI in a video game. You could train it to a certain point, save it, train it a little more, save it, train it a little more, save it again, and that could be your easy, medium, and hard boss in a video game. And all you have to do to make each of those files is save the weights and biases at that point and load them back in when you want to have your boss play the game. Now, the next thing we're going to work on is turning all the stuff that we talked about into code. I'm going to be writing this code without using any libraries. So we're going to be writing every line of code ourselves. And I'm gonna break it up into three parts. First, this part that you're watching. The next part is going to be the code for the network. And the third part is going to be setting up the training environment, which in this case will be an evolution simulator. So subscribe and hit the bell if you wanna see those and they aren't already out yet. 
And if they are out, they'll probably be on the screen here. If you guys enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, well, the other button doesn't work, so have fun. And as always, I will see you in the next one.